good wishes to all of you chapter 10 harappan culture bronze age urbanization in the indus valley audiobook introduction the urban culture of the bronze age found in harappa in pakistani punjab was a path breaking discovery in 1853 a cunningham the british engineer who became a great excavator and explorer noticed a harappan seal So the seal showed a bull and six written letters. He did not realize its significance. Much later, in 1921, the potentiality of the site of Harappa was appreciated when an Indian archaeologist, Dayaram Sahni, started excavating it. At about the same time, R. D. Banerjee, a historian, excavated the site of Mohenjo-daro in Sindh. Both discovered pottery and other antiquities indicate indicative of a developed civilization. Large scale excavations were carried out at Mohenjo-daro under the general supervision of Marshall in 1931. Meke excavated the same site in 1938. Watts excavated at Harappa in 1940. In 1946, Mortimer Wheeler excavated Harappa. and the excavation of the pre independence and pre partition period brought to light important antiquities of the harappa culture at various sites where bronze was used in the post independence period archaeologists from both india and pakistan excavated the harappa and connected sites suraj ban mk the walkar jp joshi bibi lal sr rao bk tapar Aris Bist and others worked in Gujarat, Haryana, and Rajasthan. In Pakistan, Kot Dizi in the Central Indus Valley was excavated by F. A. Khan, and great attention was paid to the Hakra and Pre-Hakra cultures by M. R. Mughal. A. H. Dhani excavated the Gandhara graves in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan. America, British, French, and Italian archaeologists also. worked at several sites including harappa now we have a wealth of harappa harappan material to excavations and explorations are still in progress all scholars agree on the urban char- character of the harappan culture but opinions differ on the role of the saraswati identified with the hakra ghagar river and also on the identity of the people who created this culture the problem will be considered later in this chapter the indus or the harappan culture is older than the chalcolithic cultures that have been examined earlier but as a bronze using culture it is far more developed than the later it developed in the northwestern part of the indian subcontinent it is called harappan because this civilization was discovered first in 1921 at the modern site of harappa situated in the province of punjab in pakistan many sites in sin formed the central zone of pre harappan culture this culture developed and matured into an urban civilization that developed in sindh and punjab the central zone of the central zone of this mature harappan culture lay in sindh and punjab principally in the indus valley from there it spread southwards and eastwards in this way the harappan culture covered parts of punjab haryana sindh baluchistan gujarat rajasthan and the fringes of western up it extended from the shivalik in the north to the arabian sea in the south and from the makran coast of baluchistan in the west to meerut in the northeast the area formed a triangle and accounted for about 1299600 square kilometer which is a largest larger area than that of pakistan and certainly larger than ancient egypt and mesopotamia no other culture zone in the third and second millennia bc in the world was as widespread as the harappan nearly 2800 harappan sites have so far been identified in the subcontinent they relate to the early mature and late phases of harappan culture 
Of the mature phase sites, two most important sites were Harappa in Punjab and Mohenjo-daro, literally the mound of the dead in Sindh, both forming parts of Pakistan. Situated at a distance of 483 kilometers, they were linked by the Indus. A third city lay at Chanhudaro, about 130 kilometers south of Mohenjo-daro in Sindh, and a fourth at Lathol in Gujarat at the head of the Gulf of Kembe. A fifth city lay at Kalibangan, which means Black Bangles in northern Rajasthan. A sixth called Banwali is situated in Hisar district in Haryana. It saw two cultural phases, pre-Harappan and Harappan, similar to that of Kalibangan. To the Harappan period relate the remains of mud bricks uh, platforms and of streets and drains. The Harappan culture is traceable in its mature and flourishing state to all these six places as also to the coastal cities of uh, Surka Zandar and Surkotara, each of which is marked by a citadel. The later Harappan phase is traceable to Rangpur and Rosdi in the Katiawar Peninsula in Gujarat. In addition, Dolvera, lying in the Kutch area of Gujarat, has Harappan fortification and all the three phases of the Harappan culture. These phases are also manifested in Rakhigar, which is situated on the Gagar in Haryana and is much larger than Dolvera. In comparative terms, Dolvera covers 15 ha, but uh, Harappa 150 ha and Rakhigar 250 ha. However, the largest site is Mohenjadaro, which covers 500 ha. In ancient times, a large part of this city was completely destroyed by massive floods. Town planning and structures. The Harappan culture was distinguished by its uh, system of town planning. Both Harappan and Mohenjadaro had a citadel or acropolis and this was possibly occupied by members of the ruling class. Below the citadel in each city lay a lower town with bricks houses that were integrated by the common people. The remarkable thing about the arrangement of the house in these cities is that they followed a grid system with roads cutting across one another virtually at right angles. Mahanjadaro scored over Harappa in terms of structures. The monuments of these cities symbolize the ability of the ruling class to mobilize the labor and collect taxes. The huge brick constructions were a means of impressing upon the common people the prestige and influence of their rulers. The most important public place of Mohenjadaro seems to have been the Great Bath, comprising the tank which is situated in the Stadel Mound and is a fine example of beautiful brickwork. It measures 11.88 into 7.01 meters and 2.43 meters deep. Flights of steps at either end, either end lead to the surface and there are side rooms for changing clothes. The floor of the bath was made of burnt bricks. Water was drawn from a large well in an adjacent room and an outlet from the corner of the bath led to a drain. It has been suggested that the great bath was uh, primitively intended for ritual bathing, which has been so vital to any religious ceremony in India. The large tank found in Dolvera may be compared to the Great Bath. The Dolvera tank was probably used for the same purpose as the Great Bath of Mohenjadaro. In Mohenjadaro, the largest building is a granary, 45.71 meter long and 15.23 meter wide. In the citadel of Harappa, however, we find as many as six granaries, a series of brick platforms formed the basic for two rooms, sorry, two rows of uh, six granaries. Each granary measured 15.23 into 6.09 meter and lay within a few meters of the river bank. The combined floor space of the 12 units would be about 838 square meter. It was approximately of the same area as the 
great granary at Mohenjo-daro. To the south of the granary, the Harappa lay working floors consisting of the rows of circular brick platforms. These were evidently meant for threshing grain because wheat and barley were found in the crevices of the floors. Harappa also had two rumored barracks which possibly accommodated laborers. In the southern part of Kalibhangan too, there are brick platforms which may have been used for granaries. Thus, it would appear the granaries that granaries played in an important role in Harappan cities. The use of burnt bricks in the Harappan cities is remarkable because in the contemporary buildings of Egypt, dried bricks were primarily used. We find the use of baked bricks in contemporary Mesopotamia, but they were used to a much larger extent in the Harappan cities. The drainage system of Mohenjo-daro was very impressive. In almost all the cities, every house, large or small, had its own courtyard and bathroom. In Kalibangan, many houses had their own wells. Water flowed from the houses to the streets which had drains. Sometimes these drains were covered with bricks and sometimes with stone slabs. The remains of streets and drains have also been found at Banwali. Altogether, the quality of the domestic bathrooms and drains is remarkable, and the drainage system of Harappa is almost unique. Perhaps no other bronze civilization paid so much attention to health and cleanliness as did the Harappa. Agriculture, comparatively rainless, the Indus region is not so fertile today, but the prosperous villages and towns of the past testify that it was fertile in ancient times. Today the rainfall is about 15 cm but in the 4th century BC, one of the historians of Alexander informs us that Sindh was the fertile part of India. In earlier times, the Indus region had a more natural vegetation which contributed to rainfall. It supplied timber for baking bricks and also for construction. In course of time, the natural vegetation was destroyed by the extension of agriculture large-scale grazing and supply of fuel. A far more important reason for the fertility of the area seem to, seems to have been the annual inundation of the Indus, which is the longest Himalayan river. Walls made of burnt bricks riser of protection indicated that food floods were an annual event. Just as the Nile created Egypt and supported its people, so to the Indus created Sindh and fed its people. The Indus people sowed seeds in the flood plains in November and re reaped their harvests of wheat and barley in April. Before the next flood, no hoy or plug share has been discovered, but the furrows discovered in the pre harappan phase at Kalibangan indicate that the fields were plugged in Rajasthan during the Harappan period. The Harappans probably used the wooden plug drawn by oxen and camels may also have been used for this purpose. Stone sickles may have been used for harvesting the crops. Gubber bands or nalas enclosed by dams for storing water were a feature in parts of Balochistan and Afghanistan. But channel or canal irrigation was probably not practiced. Harappan villages mostly situated near the flood plains produced sufficient food grains not only for their inhabitants but also the town people. They must have worked very hard to meet their own requirements as well as those of the artisans, merchants and others who lived in the city and were not directly concerned with food production activities. The Indus people produced wheat, barley, rye peas and the like. Two types of wheat and barley were grown. A substantial quantity of barley was discovered at Banwali. In addition, sesamum and mustard were grown. However, the position seems to have been different with the Harappans at Lothal. It seems that as early as 1800 BC, the people of Lothal grew rice, the remains of which have been found. Food grains were stored in huge granaries in both Mohenjadro and Harappa, and possibly in Kalibangan. In all probability, cereals were received as taxes from peasants and stored in 
grant is for the payment of wages as well as for use during emergencies this can be summarized surmised from the analogy of mesopotamian cities where wages were paid in barley the indus people were the earliest people to produce cotton and because of this the greeks called the aryan sindon which is derived from sind domestication of animals also the harappans practiced agriculture animals were raised on a large scale oxen buffaloes goats sheep and pigs were domesticated hampered bulls were favored by the harappans there is evidence of dogs and cats from the outset and asses and camels were bred and were obviously used as beasts of burden and the later may also have been used for plucking evidence of the horse comes from a superficial level of mohenjadaro and from a doubtful terracotta figure in for lo from lothal the remains of a horse are report, reported from surkotada situated in west gujarat and relate to around 2000 bc but the identity is doubtful in any case the harappan culture was not horse centered neither the bones of a horse nor its representation have been traced in early and mature harappan cultures elephants were well known to the harappans who were also acquainted with the rhinoceros the contemporary sumerian cities in mesopotamia produced virtually the same food grains and domesticated the same animals as did the harappans but the harappans in gujarat produced rice and domesticated elephants which was not the case with the mesopotamians technology and crafts the rise of town towns in the indus zone was based on agriculture surplus the making of bronze tools various other crafts and widespread trade and commerce this is known as the first urbanization in india and the harappan urban culture belongs to the bronze age the people of harappa used many tools and implements of stone but they were very well acquainted with the manufacture and use of bronze ordinarily bronze was made by smiths by mixing tin with copper but they occasionally also mixed arsenic with copper for this purpose as neither tin nor copper was easily available to the harappans bronze tools do not abound in the region the impurities of the ores show that copper was obtained from the khetri copper mines of rajasthan although it could also be brought from baluchistan tin was possibly brought with difficulty from afghanistan although its old workings are stated to have been found in hazaribagh and bastar the bronze tools and weapons recovered from the harappan sites contain a smaller percentage of tin however the kits used for the manufacture of bronze go- goods left by the harappans are so numerous as to suggest that the bronze smiths constituted an important group of artisans in harappan society they produced not only images and utensils but also various tools and weapons such as axes saws knives and spears several other important crafts flourished in harappan towns a piece of woven cloth woven cotton has been recovered from mohenjadaro and textile impression have been found on several objects spindle wards were used for spinning Wears of wool, cloth of wool and cotton. Huge brick structures suggest that bricking, brick laying was an important ca- craft and attached to the existence of class of masons. The Harappans also practiced boat making, as will be shown later. Seal making and terracotta manufacturing were also important craft. The goldsmiths made jewelry of silver, gold, and precious stones. The first two materials may have been obtained from Afghanistan, and the last from South India. The Harappans were also expert bead makers. The potter's wheel was extensively used, and the Harappans produced their character characteristics glossy, gleaming pottery. Trade and commerce. The importance of trade in the life of the Indus people is supported not only by Granders found at Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, and Lothal, but also by finds of numerous seals, a uniform script, and regulated weights and measures covering a wide area. The Harappans conducted considerable trade in stone, 
metal, shell, etc. within the Indus culture zone. However, their cities did not have the necessary raw material for the commodities they produced. They did not use metal money and in all probability carried exchanges through a barter system. In return for finished goods and possibly food grains, they produced metals from the neighboring areas by boat. They navigated the coast of the Arabian Sea and Bullock Cart. They were aware of the use of the wheel and carts with solid wheels were in use in Harappan. It appears that the Harappans used a form of the modern Eka but not with a spoked wheel. The Harappans had a commercial links with Rajasthan and also with Afghanistan and Iran. They set up a trading colony in northern Afghanistan which evidently, evidently facilitated trade with Central Asia. Their cities also had commercial links with the people of the Tigris and the Euripteris basins. Many Euphratris basins, many Harappan seals have been discovered in Mesopotamia and it appears that the Harappans imitated some cosmetics used by the Arabian people of Mesopotamia. The Harappans carried on long distance trade in lapis lazuli. Lapis objects may have contributed to the social prestige of the ruling class. The Mesopotamian records from about 2350 BC onwards refer to trade relations with the Meluha, which was the ancient name given to the Indus region. The Mesopotamian texts speak of two intermediate trading stations called Delman and Makan, which lay between Mesopotamia and Meluha. Delman is probably identifiable with Bahrain on the Persian Gulf. Thousands of graves await excavation in that port city. Social organization. Excavations indicate hereditary in urban habitation. Although only two localities are attributed to the city of Harappa, its structure evidences their distant localities. And the later is true also of Kalibangan and Dolvera. The citadel or the first locality was where the ruling class lived and the lowest tower was where the common people dwelt. The middle settlement may have been meant for bureaucrats and middle class merchants. However, whether herchery in settlements corresponded to occupational divisions or socio-economic differentiation is not clear. There is no doubt that the same city was inhabited by different housing groups which were not of the same size. Social differentiation is indicated by different residential structures with a number of rooms varying from 1 to 12. The city of Harappa had two roomed houses probably meant for artisans and laborers. laborers. Polity. As the Harappan culture is more or less uniform over a large area, a central authority may have contributed to this. We may identify some important elements of the state in the Indus Valley. The Ardha Shastra of Kautilya considers sovereignty, ministers, populated territory, forts, treasury, force and friends to be the organs of the state. In the Harappan culture, the citadel may have been the seat of sovereign power. The middle town may have been the area where the bureaucrats lived or the seat of government. And the great granary at Mohanjadro may have been the treasury. It appears that taxes were collected in grain. Also, the entire Harappan area was a well-populated territory. Fortification was a feature of several cities. Dolvira, in particular, had forts within forts. We have no clear idea of an organized force or standing army. But a heap of sling stones and the depiction of a soldier on a potshed at Surkatado may suggest a standing army. In any case, the state was well established in the mature Harappan phase. In sharp contrast to Egypt and Mesopotamia, no temples have been found at any Harappan site. No religious structures of any kind have been excavated apart from the Great Path, which may have been used for ablation. It would therefore be wrong to think that uh, 
priests ruled in Harappa as they did in the cities of Lower Mesopotamia. The Harappan rulers were more concerned with the commerce than with the conquest, and Harappa was possibly ruled by a class of merchants. However, the Harappans did not have many weapons, which might mean the lack of an effective warrior class. Religious practices in Harappa, numerous terracotta figurines of women have been found. In one figurine, a plant is shown growing out of the embryo of a woman. The image probably represents the goddess of earth and was intimately connected with the origin and the growth of plants. The Harappans therefore looked upon the earth as a fertility goddess and worshipped her in the same way as the Egyptians worshipped the Nile goddess Isis. We do not, uh, however, we do not. However, know whether the Harappans were a matriarchal people like the Egyptians. In Egypt, the doctor inherited the throne of throne or property, but we do not know about the nature of inheritance in Harappan society. Some Vedic texts indicate a rever reverence for the earth goddess, although she is not given an prominence. It took a long time for the worship of the supreme goddess to develop on a large scale in Hinduism. Only from the 6th century AD onwards are various mother goddesses such as Durga, Amba, Kali and Chandi are regarded as such in the Puranas and in Tantra literature. In the course of time, every village came to have its own separate goddess, the male deity in the Indus Valley. The male deity is represented on a seal. This god has three horn heads and is represented in the sitting poser of a yogi with one leg placed above the other. This god is surrounded by an elephant, a tiger, a rhinoceros and below his throne there is a buffalo and at his feet two deer. The god is depicted is identified as Pashupati Mahadeva. But the identification is doubtful because the bull is not represented here and horn gods also figure in other ancient civilizations. We also encounter the prevalence of the Palu's worship which is which in later times became so intimately connected with the Shiva. Numerous symbols of the Palu's and female sex organs made of stone have been found in Harappa and were possibly meant for worship. The Rigveda speaks of non-Aryan people who were Palu's worshippers. Palu's worshipper thus began in the days of the Harappa was later recognized as a respectable form of worship in Hindu society. Tree and animal worship. The people of the Indus region also worshipped trees. The depiction of a deity is represented on the seal admitted branches of the people. This tree continues to be worshipped to this day. Animals were also worshipped in Harappan times and many of them are represented on seals. The most important of them is the one horn animal unicorn which may be identified with the rhinoceros. Next in importance is the humped bull. Even today, when such a bull passes through the market streets, pious Hindus give way to it. Similarly, the animals surrounding Paspati Mahadev indicate that these were worshippers. Evidently, evidently, therefore, the inhabitants of the Indus region worshipped gods in the form of trees, animals and human beings. But the gods were not placed in temples a practice that was common in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Nor can we say anything about the religious beliefs of the Harappans without being able to read their script. Amules have been found in large numbers. In all probability, the Harappans believed that ghosts and evil forces were capable of harming them and therefore they used amulets against them. The other Veda, which is associated with the non-Aryan tradition contains many charms and spells and recommends amulets to ward of diseases and evil forces. The Harappan script. The Harappans invented the art of writing like the people of ancient Mesopotamia. Although the earliest specimen of the Harappan script was discovered in 1853 and the complete script by 1923, it has yet to be deciphered. 
some scholars try to connect it with the Dravidian or the Proto-Dravidian language, others with the Sanskrit and yet others with the Sumerian language, but none of these readings is satisfactory. As the script has not been defined, we can neither judge the Harappan contribution to literature nor say anything about their ideas and beliefs. There are nearly 4,000 specimens of Harappan writing on stone seals and other objects. Unlike the Egyptians and Mesopotamians, the Harappans did not write long inscriptions. Most inscriptions were recorded on seals and contain only a few words. These seals may have been used by the proprietor to mark and identify their private property. Altogether, we have about 250 to 400 pictographs and in the form of a picture, each letter stands for some sound, idea or object. The Harappan script is not alphabetical but largely pictographical. Attempts have been made to compare it with the contemporary scripts of Mesopotamia and Egypt. But it is the Indochinese's product of the Indus region and does not indicate any connection with the scripts of Western Asia. Weights and measures. The knowledge of a script must have helped in recording private property and the maintenance of accounts. The urban people of the Indus region also needed and used weights and measures, measures for trade and other transactions. Numerous articles used as weights have been found. They show that in weighting, largely 16 or its multiples were used. For instance, 16, 64, 160, 320 and 640. Interestingly, the tradition of 16 has continued in India up to modern times until recently 16 annas constituted 1 rupee. The Harappans also knew the art of measurement. Sticks inscribed with measures marks have been found and one of these is made of bronze. Harappan pottery. The Harappan had, Harappans had greater expertise in the use of the potter's wheel. Discovered specimens are all red and include dish on stand. Numerous pots have been found painted with a variety of designs. Harappan pots were generally decorated with the designs of trees and circles and images of men also figure on some pottery fragments. Seals and ceilings. The greatest artistic creations of the Harappan culture are seals. About 2,000 seals have been found and of these a great majority carry short inscriptions with pictures of one horn animals called unicorns, buffaloes, tigers, rhinoceros, goats, elephants, antelopes and crocodiles. Seals were made of, made of stitite or fanes and served as symbols of authority. They were hence used for stamping. However, there are few stamped objects called ceilings in contrast to Egypt and Mesopotamia. Seals were also used as emeralds. Images The Harappan artisans made beautiful images of metal. A woman dancer made of bronze in the best specimen and she, apart from wearing a necklace and naked, is naked. A few pieces of Harappan stone sculpture have been found. One statutized statue wears an ornamented rope passing over the left shoulder under the right arm like a shawl and the short locks at the back of the head are held in place by a woven fillet. Terracotta figurines. There are many figurines made of fire baked earthen clay, commonly called terracotta. These were either used as toys or objects of worship. They represent birds, dogs, sheep, cattle, and monkeys. Men and women also find a place in the terracotta objects, and the second outnumber the first. The seals and images were manufactured with a great skill, but the terracotta pieces represent unsophisticated artistic works. The contrast between the two sets indicates the gap between the classes that utilized them, the first being used by members of the upper classes and the second by the common people. Stonework We do not find much stonework in Harappa and Mohenjadaro because stone could not be produced by the two great cities. The position was, however, different in Dolvira located in Kutch. The citadel of Dolvira built of stone is a momental work and the most impressive among the Harappan citadels discovered so far. In Dolvira, 
Dressed stone is used in masonry with mud bricks, which is remarkable. Stone slabs is used in three types of burials in Dolvira, and in one of these, above the grave, there is a circle of stones resembling a megalithic stone circle. End of the Indus culture. The mature Harappan culture, broadly speaking, existed between 2500 and 1900 BC. Throughout the period of its ex existence, it seems to have retained the same kind of tools, weapons and houses. The entire lifestyle appears to have been uniform, the same town planning, the same seals, the same terracotta works and the same long chert blades. However, the view stressing changeless cannot be pushed too far. We do not notice changes in the pottery of Mohenjadaro over a period of time. By the, ninth, by the 19th century BC, the two important cities of Harappa culture, Harappa and Mohenjadaro, disappeared. But the Harappan culture at other sites faded out gradually and continued in its degenerate form in the outlying rings of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana and Western UP until 1500 BC. It is difficult to account for this culture collapse. The environmental factor may have been important. In the Harappan zone, both the Yamuna and settlers moved away from the Saraswati or the Hakra around 1700 BC. This meant loss in water supply, similarly rainfall decreased it about that time. Some speak of a dam formation in the Indus leading to a massive flooding of Mohenjadaro. These factors may have worked adversely, but failure in human activities cannot be discounted. It appears that crafts and commerce collapsed because of the sudden end of the long distance land and sea trade with Mesopotamia. This trade in luxurious articles including lapis lazuli, beads, etc. Mainly passed through Elam, which was located on the eastern border of Mesopotamia and covered a substantial part of Iran. The emergence of Elam as a powerful state around 2000 BC interrupted the supply of Harappan goods to Mesopotamia and the Mesopotamian imports including tin to the Harappan settlements. Beads of hard materials, especially stone, were made in the Harappan zone and sent out, outside. The break in their exports to Mesopotamia deprived the craftsmen of their livelihood. Similarly, the break in the supply of tin to the valley deal the great blow to the artisans employed in making bronze. The exhaustion of the soil may have dimensioned cereal production and starved the urban people. Once the aristocracy living in the cities failed to exercise its control over crafts and cultivation, Harappan culture collapsed. Maturity Nearly 2,800 Harappan sites have been identified. Of these, early and post-urban Harappan sites account for over half the total number. Mature Harappan settlements number 1022 of them. 406 are located in Pakistan and 616 in India. The mature Harappan sites are outnumbered by the early and post-Harappan sites. Because of their Harappan nature, the total area of the mature Harappan sites is larger than that of the early and post-urban sites. The Harappan cities are indicative of well-planned growth but their Mesopotamian counterparts show haphazard growth. Rectangular houses with brick blinker, brick linked bathrooms and wells together with their stairways are found in all Harappan cities. But such town planning is not evident in the cities of Western Asia. No other people in antiquity had built such an excellent drainage system except perhaps those of Crete in Knossos, nor did the people of Western Asia show such skill in the use of burnt bricks as did the Harappans. The Harappan produced their own characteristic pottery and seals, and above all, they invented their own script, which neither resembled the Egyptian nor the Mesopotamian. No contemporary culture spread over such a wide area as did the Harappan. post urban phase The Harappan culture seems to have flourished until 1900 BC. 
Subsequently, its urban phase marked by systematic town planning, extensive brickwork, the art of writing, standard weights and measures. Distinction between the citadel and the lower town, use of bronze tools and redware pottery painted with black designs, which usually disappeared as did its stylistic homogeneity. Some traits of post-urban Harappan culture are to be found in Pakistan and in central and western India, in Punjab, Rajasthan, Haryana, Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi and western UP, they broadly cover the period for, from 1900 to 1200 BC. The post-urban phase of Harappan culture is also known as the sub-Indus culture and was earlier considered post-Harappan but now is better known as post-urban Harappan culture. Post-urban Harappan cultures were primarily chalcolithic in which tools of stone and copper were used. They did not have metal objects requiring complicated casting although they had axes, chisels, knives, bangles, curved razors, fish hooks and spearheads. The chalcolithic people in the later post-urban phase lived in villages subsisting on agriculture, stock raising, hunting and fishing. Probably the dissemination of metal technology in the rural areas promoted agriculture and settlements. Some places such as Prabhas, Patna, Somnath and Rangpur both in Gujarat are the direct descendants of the Harpan culture. However, in Ahar near Udaipur, only a few Harappan elements are found. Gilan, which seems to have been a regional center of Ahar culture, even has brick structures which may be placed between 2000 and 1500 BC. Otherwise, burnt bricks have not been found anywhere else except perhaps in the late Harappan phase at Bhagwanpur, Bhagwanpura in Haryana. However, the dating of the Bhagwanpura layer to which the bricks relate is uncertain. Stray pieces occurred at the OCP site of Lal Quila in Bulansha district in western UP. It should, however, be emphasized that a few Harappan elements are to be found in the Chalcolithic culture of Malwa, 1700 to 1200 BC which had its largest settlement at Navdatoli. The same is true of the numerous jaw sites found in the valleys of the Tapi, Godavari and Bhima. The largest of the jaw settlements was Daimabad which had about 22 ha of habitation with a possible population of 4000 and may be considered proto-urban. However, a vast majority of the Jaur settlements were villages. Some post-urban Harappan settlements were discovered in the Swat Valley in Pakistan. Here, the people practiced a developed agriculture and the cattle breeding together with the pastoralism. They used a black grey burnisher where produced on a slow wheel. This way resembles the pottery from the northern Iranian plateau during the 3rd millennium BC and later. This Swat Valley people also produce a black on red painted and wheel turned pottery with a close linkage with the Indus pottery during the early post urban period, that is, with the post urban culture associated with Harpa. This Swat Valley may therefore be regarded as the northernmost up outpost of the late Harappan culture. Several late or post urban Harappan sites have been excavated in the Indian territories of Punjab, Haryana, UP and also in Jammu. Mention may be made of Manda in Jammu, Chandigarh and Sanghol in Punjab, Dautapur and Mithal in Haryana and Alamgipur and Hulas in western UP. It seems that the Harappans took a to rise when they came to Daulatpur in Haryana and Hulas in Sharanpur district of UP. Ragi or finger millet is not so far known to have been grown at any Harappan site in North India. In Alamgirpur, the late Harappans probably produced cotton as can be inferred from the cloth impression on Harappan pottery. 
the painted harappan pottery found in the late or post urban harappan sites in the northern and eastern areas is represented with less intricate designs although there are some new pot forms some late harappan pot forms are found interlocked with the painted gravel reminds at bhagwan pura but by this time the harappan culture seems to have reached a point of a complete dilution in the post urban harappan phase no object for measuring length has been found in gujarat cubical stone weights and terracotta cakes were absent in the later period generally all post urban harappan sites lack human figurines and the characteristic painted designs all the finds went out of fashion in gujarat it was freely used in north india percolation of new peoples during the late phase of harappan culture some exotic tools and pottery indicate the slow percolation of new peoples into the indus basin some signs of insecurity and violence are evident in the last phase of mohenjadaro hordes of jewelry were buried at places and skulls were huddled together at one place new types of axes daggers knives with a midriffs and flat tanks figure in the upper levels of mohenjadaro they seem they seem to betray some foreign intrusion traces of new peoples have been found in a cemetery related to the late phase of harappa where new kinds of pottery occur in the latest levels new types of pottery also occur in some harappan sites in balochistan balochistan indicates that the horse and bactrian camel existed there in 1700 bc the new peoples may have come from iran and south central asia but they did not come in such numbers as they completely overwhelmed the harappan sites in punjab and sindh although the rig vedic people largely settled in the land of the seven rivers in which the harappan culture once flourished we have no archaeological evidence of any mass scale confrontation between the late harappans and the indo aryans successive groups of the vedic people may have entered the subcontinent in the post urban harappan phase between 1500 and 1200 bc problem of origin several pre harappan agriculture settlements sprang up in the hakra area in the choristan desert in pakistan around 4000 bc however agricultural settlements first arose on the eastern fringe of balochistan around 7000 bc in the pre ceramic neolithic age on the border of the indus plains from that time onwards people domesticated goats sheep and cattle they also produced barley and wheat these practices of earning subsistence expanded from the 5th millennium bc when granaries were set up in the 5th and 4th millennium bc mud bricks began to be used painted pottery and female terracotta figurines also began to be made in the northern part of balochistan a site called rahman dheri developed as the earliest town with a planet roads and houses this site was located virtually parallel to harappa on the west it is evident that the early harappan and mature harappan cultures developed from the balochistan settlement sometimes the origin of harappan culture is attributed principally to the natural environment the current environment of the harappan area is not favorable for crafts and cultivation but in the 3rd millennium bc arid and semi desert conditions were not dominant there in 3000 to 2000 bc we have evidence of both a heavy rain and a substantial flow of water into the indus and its tributary saraswati virtually identical to the dried up hakra in sin sometimes the indus culture is called the saraswati culture but the flow of water in the harappan hakra was the contribution of the yamuna and the settlers these two rivers joined the saraswati for some centuries due to tectonic developments in the himalayas therefore the credit for helping the harappan culture should really go to these two rivers together with the indus and not to the saraswati alone moreover the evidence for heavy rainfall in the indus area cannot be ignored 
Was the Harappan culture Vedic? Sometimes Harappan culture is called Rig Vedic, but its principal features do not figure in the Rig Veda. Planned towns, crafts, commerce, and large structures built of burnt bricks mark the mature Harappan phase. The Rig Veda does not feature these. As will be shown later, the early Vedic people lived on cattle rearing supplemented by agriculture and did not use bricks. The early Vedic people occupied virtually the entire Harappan zone but also lived in Afghanistan. The mature urban phase lasted from 2500 to 1900 BC but the Rig Veda is placed around 1500 BC. Also the Harappan and uh, Vedic people were not aware of exactly the same plants and animals. The Rig Veda mentions only barley, but the Harappan knew about wheat, sesame, and peas. The rhinoceros was known to the Harappans but unknown to the early Vedic people. The same is true of the tiger. The Vedic chiefs were horse centered, which is why this animal is mentioned 215 times in the Rig Veda, but the horse was hardly known to the urban Harappans. The Harappan terracotta represent the elephant. But unlike the horse, it is not important in the earliest Veda. The Harappan writing called the Indus script has not been deferred so far, but no indo aryan inscriptions of Vedic times have been found in India. We have no clear idea about the languages of the Harappans. So the indo aryan language spoken by the Vedic people continues in South Asia in a variety of forms. Problem of continuity. Some scholars speak about the continuity of the Harappan culture, others of its change from urbanization to de-urbanization. As urbanization was the basic feature of the Harappan culture, with its collapse we cannot think of a cultural continuity. Similarly, the de-urbanization of the Harappan city is not a simple transformation but uh, meet the disappearance of towns, script and burnt bricks for about 1500 years. These elements did not disappear in North India after the end of the Kushan towns. It is said that the Harappan culture continued in the Gangetic plains and elsewhere in North India after its end in 1900 BC. However, no important Harappan feature appeared in the painted graveyard culture attributed to the first half of the first millennium BC. The PGW cultures does not evidence great buildings, burnt bricks, bronze, urbanism and writing, but it has its own characteristic pottery. The own one or two instances of burnt bricks of about 1500 BC are adducer. Really foiled bricks appeared in North India around 300 BC in the face of the Northern Black Polished Ware culture. Similarly, once the Harappan culture ended, writing came into currency during the NBPW phase in the form of the Brahmi script. It was, however, written uh, from left to right, whereas the Harappan script was written from right to left. Similarly, the NBP pottery cannot be related to Harappan pottery. The effective use of iron in the NBPW phase gave rise to a new economic structure in the mid gangetic plains in the 5th century BC. However, neither iron nor coinage, which marked the NBPW phase, was a characteristic of the Indus culture. Though some stray beads of the Indus culture reached the Gangetic plains, they cannot be considered an important Indus trait. Similarly, a few Harappan ceramic items and terracotta continued after 2000 BC, but these objects alone cannot represent the entirely of the mature Harappan culture. However, stray elements of the Indus culture continued in the Chalcolithic cultures of Rajasthan, Malwa, Gujarat, and Upper Deccan. It appears that after the end of the urban people culture in 1900 BC, there was some give and take between the Indo Aryan and the existing cultures. The Munda and Proto Dravidian languages attributed to the Harappans continued. So, the interaction both the Aryan and pre-Aryan languages for enriched. We find pre-Aryan words for pottery and agriculture in Sanskrit, but the balance weight in favor of the 
Indo Aryans, whose language spread in a major part of the subcontinent. End of the chapter Chronology. BC 7000 earliest agricultural settlements in Balochistan. Fifth millennium existence of a grandest use of mud bricks. 4000 pre Harappan settlements in Cholistan, Pakistan. 3000 to 2000 period of heavy rain and substantial flow of water into the Indus and Saraswati. 2500 to 1900 mature Harappan culture. 2000 Alam as a powerful state, the remain of a horse in a Sarkotara. 1900 to 1500 degenerate phase of Harappan culture in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana, and Western UP. 1800 use of rice in Lothal. 1900 to 1200 post urban Harappan culture. 1700 the Yamuna and Satlas leaves the Saraswati existence of the horse and bacterian camel in Balochistan. 1500 to 1200 successive groups of the Vedic people enter the Indian subcontinent. 300 fired bricks used in North India writing in Brahmi script. Chronology of Harappan Archaeology 1853 a cunning hums find of a Harappan seal. 1921 Dayaram Sahni's excavation at Harappa. 1931 Marshall excavated, excavated Mohenjadaro. 1938 Mackey excavated the same size. 1940 Watts excavated Harappa. 1946 Mortimer Wheeler excavated Harappa. Post 1947 period Harappa and associated sites excavated by Suras Ban, MK, Dawalikar. J.P. Joshi, B.B. Lal, S.R. Rao, B.K. Tapal, R.S. Beast and others. Thank you.